Hello everyone. While you were studying options, you would have often come across the term delta and possibly you would have also learnt how to calculate delta. But in this video, we are not going to focus on the calculation. What we are going to do is get a little bit deeper into the concept of delta and see its relevance in the pricing of options and also the way the option pricing behaves. So without any delay, let's just get into it. With knowledge of Greeks, an option trader can make more well-informed decision about which options to trade and when to trade them. Like for example, Delta gives you the likelihood that an option you are considering will expire in the money. Or Gamma, which estimates how the Delta will change when the stock price changes. Or Theta, which gives you an idea of or how much your option will lose in value each day as it approaches expiration or you can understand how sensitive an option might be to a large swing in the underlying stock prices or how interest rate changes affect the pricing of the option. In options, there are five main types of Greeks, Delta, Theta, Gamma, Vega and Rho. But in this video, we are going to deal extensively with Delta only. Here are some basics about Delta. Option Delta measures the rate of change in option premium based on the directional movement of the underlying price. That is, it shows that if the underlying asset price changes, then how much would the option price change by? The value of the option delta ranges from plus 1 to minus 1. We'll get into details of this in a little while. And another way to look at delta is that it shows the probability of the option expiring in the money. For example, an option delta of 0.6 indicates that there is a 60% chance that the option will expire in the money. Let's first take the example of a call. If the stock price is at rupees 100 at 10 am, then the call with a strike price of 110 will obviously be out of the money and let's say it's trading at a premium of rupees 3. At 10.30, the stock price moves to 130 rupees. Then the call with a strike price of 110, which was earlier out of the money, will now suddenly become in the money and will start trading at a higher premium. So let's say this trades at a premium of 24 rupees. And then at 11.30 am, the stock price, let us say, dips to 70, which means it once again becomes out of the money. In which case, the call with a strike price of 110 will again be out of the money and will trade at a low premium of rupee 1. Now, if you really look at these examples, you will realize that when the stock price moves up from say 100 rupees to 130 rupees, the call value also moved up from rupees 3 to rupees 24. And subsequently, when the stock price came down from 130 to rupees 70, the call value also came down to rupee 1. Therefore, we can summarize by saying that if the stock price goes up, the call price will also go up. And if the stock price comes down, the call value will also come down. Therefore, this means that the stock price and call value are positively correlated. That is, they move in the same direction. Now, let's take the example of a put. Let's say there's a stock whose market price at 10 a.m. is Rs. 100 and a put with a strike price on the stock of Rs. 110 will obviously be in the money and let's say it's trading at a premium of Rs. 13. Now, at 10.30, let us say the stock price moves to 130 that is it moves up then the put with a strike price of rupees 110 will obviously become out of the money and will start trading at a lower premium of rupees 3. Now let's say at 11 am the stock price moves to 70 in which case the put with the strike price of 110 will obviously become in the money and will start trading at a higher premium of rupees 45. Now in case of a put you would notice that when the stock price goes up, the value of put actually decreases. And when the stock price comes down, the value of the put increases. 
So the relationship between the stock price and the put can be summarized. That is, if stock price goes up, the value of put comes down. And if the stock price comes down, the value of put goes up, which means that stock prices and value of put are inversely correlated. That is, they move in the opposite direction. So now we can conclude that a long call will have a positive delta. That is, the value of a long call will go up if the value of the underlying goes up and vice versa and a long put will have a negative delta that is if the value of the underlying goes up the value of a long put will actually come down because it is inversely related in a simplistic model option delta is expressed as under swing of option upon swing of underlying that is equal to the option delta of course in black scholes model the uh, value of option delta is represented by nd1 but that's another story altogether let's understand how option delta is calculated in a sim very simple model of riskless theory let's say there's a stock which has a current market price of 100 and which according to our estimates can move up to a price of 160 or on the lower side it can move to a price of rupees 40. Now what will be the value of call which has a strike price of 90 on expiry if the market price of the stock goes up to 160. Obviously it will be 70 which is the difference between 160 and 90 and the value of the call the same call with a strike price of 90 when the market price of the stock is rupees 40 on expiry will be zero which means the stock can have a maximum value of 160 rupees and a minimum value of 40 rupees while on the other hand the call with a strike price of 90 can have a maximum value of rupees 70 and a minimum value of zero which means the option can swing from 70 to zero which means it has a swing of rupees 70 and the stock price can swing from 160 to 40 which means it has got a swing of 120 that is 160 minus 40 rupees so the swing of option is 70 rupees and the swing of the underlying that is the stock is 120 which gives us an option delta of 0.58 Similarly, let's take for a put. Let's say there's a stock whose current market price is 100, which can go up to 150 and go down till 30. Now the value of a put, which has a strike price of 90, when the market price is 150 will obviously be zero because it will be out of the money. And the value of the put with a strike price 90, when the market price is 30, will obviously be 60. That means the value of the put can swing from 60 to 0 while the value of the stock can swing from 150 to 30. Therefore, in a simplistic riskless model, the option delta which is measured by swing of option upon swing of underlying will be 60 minus 0 upon 150 minus 30 which gives us an option delta of 0.5. However, things work a little differently when we use Black-Scholes model where the option delta is given by ND1. Now this is where we see the real magic of option delta happening. To demonstrate this, I'll take you to a site where we will work out the option pricing using Black-Scholes model and where delta will also be calculated. And let's see what happens. Okay, let's use this free black Scholes option price calculator which is available online let's take the spot price of the stock to be 100 and the strike price also let us take it as 100 which means right now we are trying to value an at the money option let's take the volatility of the stock to be at 20 percent now this is nothing but the standard deviation we'll take the risk-free rate as eight percent and time to expiry 30 days which means one month so let's see what the option price is shown by this calculator. Now this shows that the call option should be priced at 2.62 and a put at 1.37. But more importantly, look at Delta. It's 0.56 for call and negative 0.44 for the put. Now we know that put has a negative Delta because it moves in the opposite direction to the stock price and the call option has a positive Delta because it moves in the same direction as the stock. But what is interesting to note here is that the delta for both the call and the put is near about 0.5 now that is because the option is at the money now let's take another example 
and in this case let's see how things change when we try to value a deep in the money option so let's say the stock price is 100 the strike price of the call 70 volatility of let's say 10 percent risk free rate 8 percent time to expiry let's keep it as 90 days and let's calculate the option price and you would see that the option price is coming to 31.37 for call while for put it's coming to zero well actually it won't be zero it would be a small amount but possibly this software rounds it off hence we are getting the value zero but the more important thing that you should notice here is that delta is one now what does delta of one tell you now delta of one tells us that it is almost virtually certain that this option will expire in the money now when we make this statement we also got to keep an eye on the standard deviation that is the volatility now in this case the volatility being as low as 10 percent there is a high chance that this option is going to end up in the money but what if the stock was very volatile now let us increase this volatility to say hypothetically to 80 percent that means the stock can jump up or down and the probability of this happening is 80 percent then obviously the level of certainty for the option to expire in the money will come down so now let us see what happens you see this call option is 34.36 but the delta is now 0.87 that means it is now not virtually certain that this option will end up in the money that is because the stock has got a huge volatility now just to make sure let us reduce this volatility to five percent which means the stock is less volatile as compared to earlier and now if you see the delta it changes to one so therefore the delta depends on quite a few number of things that is one is the option in the money or out of the money now we know that if the option is deep in the money the delta of the option is going to be one and if it is deep out of the money the delta of the option is going to be nearer to zero and at the money option is likely to have a value which is near 0.5 and all this also depends on the volatility now let us see what happens if this option is out of the money so let us say the call strike price of the call is 120 which means it's out of the money and with a volatility of 5 percent let's calculate the call value now you're seeing the call values come down to zero so it's a small amount put has got a value of 17.68 now delta of call is zero that means it is virtually certain now that the option will not end up being in the money hence we can summarize the following the delta of long call will be positive whereas the delta for short call will be negative now this is because we know that if the underlying price increases the value of the call also will increase but in this case since you have sold the call you will be incurring losses as the value of call increases because of increase in the value of stock that means if the stock goes up your payoff actually becomes a loss hence the delta is negative similarly the delta for a long put will be negative while the delta for a short put will be positive have a look at this table let's take a call which is deep in the money but with a low standard deviation that means the stock does not have too much volatility and the option is already in the money which means there is a high probability that the option will expire in the money because the stock does not move too much so therefore this will have an option delta value which is closer to one in the second case the call is deep in the money but the problem is that it has got a high standard deviation so the stock shows a high degree of volatility in which case the option delta will be a little farther away from one say 0.87 that means this indicates that there is a 0.87 probability that the that the option will expire in the money but there is a 0.13 possibility that the option may not expire in the money the third case a call which is at the money with a moderate standard deviation would have an option delta value of 0.5 and a call which is deep out of the money with a low standard deviation that means the stock does not move too much will have an option delta value of zero the reason is that the option is already deep out of the money and the stock doesn't exhibit any characteristic of movement hence the probability of its expiring in the money 
will be almost zero and lastly a call which is out of the money but it's got a high standard deviation that means it can move uh, in a considerably wide range will have a probability which is slightly higher than zero say 0.13 so that indicates that there is a 0.13 probability that the option will expire in the money but that's a pretty low probability hence we see that the delta is not only a function of whether it is in the money or out of the money but it is also a function of the standard deviation now this is something that is very important and has to be considered very carefully by people who wish to trade in options they not only have to look whether it's in the money or out of the money but they also have to consider the standard deviation and in addition to standard deviation they also have to consider the time because if the standard deviation is low and the time left to expiry is also very short then the chances of the option expiring in the money will drastically reduce if you have any queries please do post it on my comments and i will try to answer as much as possible and do not forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified for any new videos by me thank you and be happy